Hello everybody. <laughs> Good to see you here. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Still figuring out my... I just don't understand stuff. I know I say that every time. I come, come on. Um, today we're going to be painting this cute little lamb. And he's wondering what most of us are wondering. Is it spring? I just love the expression on his face, so I thought it would be a good one for doing at the end of uh, March. As the old saying goes, if uh, March comes in like a lion, it'll go out like a lamb. Well, he's kind of questioning that. Is it safe to come out? <laughs> so I've uh, made a drawing of that one, and you can find that in the community page of my channel. There's a link in there, and um, after the stream, I will put it in the description below. So if you're watching this uh, as a recording, you can um, just, it says show more, and if you press on that, you'll see the link down below, and you are free to download it and um, paint along with me. So today I'm probably going to paint on one of these scrapbook papers. So these are from Stamperia, both of them I believe. Yes. And this one was from Northern Lights, I think. And this one here is from uh, Garden, it's called. I'll show you that. That's from this one. Hey, Dot. Does everything look good? Sound quality of uh, video? Is it all okay? Hey, Nancy. I have a real leg going on here, so if I don't answer you or see, you'll know. <laughs> hey, Kat. Good to see you. Now, last week we did um, this here. So we added this um, house, birdhouse, onto the other side. Now, we had, I had a few people inquiring whether what paper pack this one came in, and it came in the Stamperia Frozen Roses. It's a really cute pack, and you could use it for a lot of stuff. So that's that one. Now, I don't know whether you can get these anymore. That's hard to say. Um, but that's where that came from. And it was a... This is the page I got it out of. So it was actually a wall of um, recessed paneling in an old wall. And I cut out the panels and used them as the... Um, sides of the birdhouse and then there was another area that had this um, paper in it and I used it for the roof. So it all came out of that one. Looks good, sounds good. Thanks Nancy. So I hope you guys are all having a great day. It's beautiful spring weather. Um, we got a little bit of a bonus here in Canada. It's been in double digits in the teens uh, Celsius and uh, that's really brought up everything in the garden. It's nice to see um, but next week we're back to our normal temperatures of single digits. <laughs> 
but that's okay too. As long as we don't get a whole pile of snow. I know um, northern Ontario got 30 centimeters yesterday. <laughs> and I pity them. But they're kind of used to it. Uh, northern Ontario usually gets hit with snow right into June. Um, I could never live up there. <laughs> it would be so depressing. Um, most of my snow has gone. I've already been in the garden doing some gardening and clean up. Um, I'm thinking of doing uh, actually a few videos about how I do my gardening. I'm a little different than most people. I believe in um, the natural way. So if you kind of think ab about it, if you go into a forest, the leaves, the bush, the little twigs and stuff, they all fall on down to the ground and they decompose and they enrich the soil. Nothing's ever disturbed in the ground. So it's never dug up, it's never hoed. And that's the way I like to do it. Even when I made my garden beds, all I did was put um, uh, cardboard on top of the grass and then just piled dirt on top of the cardboard to make raised beds and it's worked fantastic and then you don't have to cart away this you know the sod and stuff it enriches the soil so in cleanup what I do is I rake all the leaves off and cut down the um, twigs and spent stalks and then I um, I take my lawnmower and I mow over it and put it back onto the garden. <laughs> so it's chewed up a bit, not as big. So it's more like a mulch and it enriches the uh, garden. Now you can take out, if you see any uh, perennial um, weeds like dandelions, clover, that type of thing, you can dig those out. But I never hoe it. I just leave it. And I have a huge amount of dewworms in my um, garden, so I know that it's doing the job and it's healthy soil and my plants are huge So that's what I do and um, This year I'm probably going to get some uh, Shredded uh, bark or Wood chips not really wood chips, but shredded so it's a little finer, and then I'm going to put that over to suppress any weeds that do come up. But if you do that enough times, your your soil builds up into a really lovely uh, loam, uh, weed-free, and um, weeds will not come up in it anymore. And if you have enough plants in your garden, to cover all the areas so your your um, soil isn't exposed. Usually you don't have to do a, a whole lot of gardening or you know weeding that type of thing and uh, that's what I like to do because it's, it's less maintenance. It's really the only maintenance I do is in the early spring of doing that type of thing or putting the mulch on but after that I hardly do any weeding at all. Um, I cut back a deadhead, that's the type, type of thing I do, but I, I enjoy that. So if you're ever thinking of um, doing any gardening, try that way. It's It makes a lot of sense. Hey, Janet. And I've always had success doing it that way. And that way you're not disturbing the ground, all the microorganisms in the ground and you see less weeds and you're giving back to the soil. And then you don't have to go to the dump with your leaves and your twigs and all that. It just goes back into the earth. So it's always it's always been a plus for me. I've never had any problems with it. Um, I have a ch chap coming to look at my garden in the next couple of days, I quote. Or a big tidy up. Ah, okay. Yeah, you gotta watch though, Dot. Make sure they know what they're doing. I know there's a lot of people out there 
that are saying they know perennials and gardens and all that stuff. And <laughs> they don't. <laughs> My sister's had that problem many times where they've mulched right over top of all the perennials and killed them. Like, oh no, it's good for the perennial. No, you don't mulch over your plants. That's what mulch does to suppress things from coming up. So why would you put it over your plants? Oh dear. So make sure he knows what he's doing. Um, mulch holds in water too, so in the dry climate. Yeah, exactly. And you know, the more layers uh, through the years of mulch and leaves and, and debris that you um, mulch up with your lawnmower and put it back on, that makes a beautiful loam soil and that stays damp and keeps the garden um, from drying out. We have a lot of uh, um, clay in our soils here, but um, yeah, me doing this, it's been great. So, as you, I don't know if anyone tried this, um, but it's a really cute little uh, thing to do. So we're going to do the next one on the back here. Because this is the end of, of the year, and like I was telling the girls earlier, um, Stamperia has this in their book, and... The other one is this, and it comes from Winter Roses, I think it's called. Did I say that? Uh, I think it's Winter Roses. Where did I put it? No, Frozen Roses. There's, that's where this one comes from. Oh, no, it's not Stamperia. It's uh, Carabello. I was mistaken. They're so similar. So that's not Stamperia. So that's what we can use either this one or um, this this one. Uh, because we're doing a lamb, I think I'm going to do the red. Because the lamb is going to be white, so it'd be awfully pale if we just did this one. But do what you want. Um, Here's the little guy we're doing. And you can go on my um, YouTube channel and under the community tab, press on that, and there is a downloadable for this traceable for you to paint along if you want. So make sure you check that out. And if you're um, watching this in the recording, after the recording, I do the live, I will put it in the description below, but give me a little bit of time. So we're going to put the whole sheet on, even though it's got, we're going to have a darker area around here. This is straw and then there's the ground here, but we're going to paint right over top of this, all these different things here. So don't worry about, um, the color. We're going to use acrylic craft paint and get it all on there and it'll look just great. So get your paints out and glue and um, decide what kind of paper you're going to use. You could, you don't have to use the um, this paper. You could paint this on too, but I really want to use up my um, supplies. I have a ton of paper, so that's what I'm going to do, but if you want to, you could paint on the uh, old barn style wood. So I'm just going to adhere this. Hey Jersey! You could actually, um, if you have barns around, you could take a photograph of the barn wall and use that. That would work too. Hey, Lane. I 
think I might need to put this on too. I'm going to put some on the back of my paper also because it's pretty. I'm just going to do it off the side. This is crooked. If you got any questions, just uh, put them in caps so I can see. got a credit card or one of these uh, squeegee things you can use that just to get all the air bubbles out and I'm just going to give that a little dry here today but still above what we typically have. I think it's 10 here Celsius. We're usually around 5 at this time of year so I'm happy. <laughs> I got to go in my garden so I'm happy. <laughs> probably have to do some of the edges again but as long as most of it's down that should be good I'm just going to take my scissors, cut along the edge here. So what's everyone been doing? Have you been doing any painting or are you still into doing books?
this here. little ragged in there but we can fix that later okay so we have this now what I'm going to do is this little guy I'm probably gonna have to use I don't know if black's gonna show on this I might have to use a white tracing paper find it. Okay. I've got some white tracing paper here. So if you're using a darker uh, color, it's always good to have a lighter tracing paper. So I want, yeah, he's about in the middle there. And I'm just going to take some washi tape. Hey, Joan. Thanks, Brooke. I'm just going to tape this down so it doesn't move on me. And I'm going to trace the... I don't have a whole lot of lines because most of it's um, going to be paint texture and that type of thing. And then you just take a ballpoint pen of some sort and trace your lines. Now this is kind of a, the edge of the doorway so it's it's more of a post it's on an angle so it's got a bit of um, shading to be done so that's why I'm putting this line here and this is the other side inside the, the barn and then I'm going to make it ragged on the bottom so you know how barns get and then this is a little handle here now we may have to paint out some areas on the paper but that's fine Hope I got it on the right way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, make sure you got it on the right way. You don't want to do all that tracing and then find out you had it upside down. Believe me. <laughs> I've done it before. And then this is the side of the door that rolls. And don't have to worry about that too much. Here's the um, step down from the barn. And I'm just going to put him in or her, doesn't matter. He's not sure about the weather. He's just peeking outside and saying, I don't know if it came in like a lamb or not, or went out like a lamb. It came in like a lion, but <laughs> he's kind of scared to go out there. The weather's too unpredictable. Don't worry if you don't get the, the lines exact. So we're going to paint over a lot of this anyways, but you kind of want to know where your areas are. And you can always put this pattern back on if you find you've traced over it too much or painted over it. 
we're gonna just kind of um, put a base coat on. Let me see if this is all on the way I want it. Oh yeah, that will work. Okay, so that's straw. Okay, so there is the So now I know where I'm going to do my painting. So the back area, which is in here, is going to be dark. So we're going to just start to fill in our areas with um, paint. And I'm just using uh, Americana and Ceramicoat, Delta Ceramicoat. This one is soft black. I just like using this because then your pages don't stick together in your journal. And there's no point in using expensive paints for your journal. Save a little bit of money. Um, let's see, what else? Maybe we want a little bit of cream in there maybe. Let's see. I have to... Oh, no, there's some. Can mix it up with the paint. So let's paint the background area first. So I'm just going to take probably an angled brush. I like using angled brushes. And this is a uh, number it's a three-eighths angle. So I'm just going to take some of this black and pretty well most of the area will be this blackish color. You can mix it up to make um, maybe there's you can see little bits and pieces of part of the walls inside or the beams or that type of thing. There's no real wrong way of doing this. Just have fun with it. And this way you're half done because you're using your paper. Now you can um, put a clear gesso over top of this or matte medium. If you want matte medium on top in case you paint something and then you want to take it up, it's best to put a matte medium over. I didn't. Um, but it is a good idea for beginners to, to do that just, just in case you want to lift something. And I can take a ruler and make this line a little straighter. I might do that. I'll make Janet happy. <laughs> it is an old barn though. <laughs> okay, let's put a little bit in here. I'm going to lighten it a little bit as I go down. Put a little bit of beige in it. So just make it streaky. There's a lot of hay on the ground here, so you want it a little bit dark, and then we'll do the light hay color on top. I 
but you want it fairly opaque so you don't see that red through it. Alright. Let's see. Let's get a ruler. And we'll just put a line. I'm just going to paint right along the line so it's even. I knew you would <laughs> vote for a ruler. It works. Sometimes you have to use a ruler when you're dealing with um, architecture and that type of thing. Because unless you want kind of a wonky looking building. <laughs> that sometimes looks kind of cool too. Uh, let's see. That one's probably not too bad. We could probably straighten it up a bit. that. And let's see what else dark on him. His eyes are fairly dark so I could put a little bit of this black in his eyes just to get that in there. Don't worry if you go over it with your white or cream when you put it in. You always you always have your traceable that you can retrace stuff, so don't fret. Little nose. Now this kind of looks funny here, so what I'm going to do like the lines aren't matching. I could have put it on an angle, maybe it would have been better. So there's a thought for you guys. Check your angle first. <laughs> I should have done that. Um, now, I'd have to match this. Let's see. What color this is. Darker could more on the red. Reddish. That might work. This one is. Ooh, this one isn't. I don't think this one's any good. Actually, that one's pretty good too. Let's see if I can get this shook enough. Maybe it'll come back. Kind of on the pinky side. I just need a bit. Let's see what this does. Oh, 
always a good uh, thing to, well, not really. Hmm, let me think. How am I going to do this? Because I want to change this, which means... This one. Thinking. That one might be better. Oh, that's better. Might have to put a couple coats on, but. Try and work with it. And then just dry brush over bits of it. Might have to go over it a few times, but this is how you learn your colors and um, how to match colors. It's fun. You learn a lot doing this. Okay, that one I can leave. You just have to practice to, it's almost like camouflage. How are you going to camouflage this so it looks like it wasn't there? So I'm just going to put this right over this black just to get it down enough. And then I can mix it a little, little bit with, here and there, with some um, cream color. It kind of takes your eye off of the, that one color that you put down. So it's not as noticeable. dry brush to more on the bottom here. All right. So now that line, remember we had that line down there? That is going to be um, where our color gets a little darker. So we're going to put a glaze on. And we can use that 
big brush, if you have a great big brush, because it's going to be fairly watered down. If you have a glazing medium, you can use that or just have a bit of water on your brush. You don't want too much water though, because then it will um, be too opaque. And you just go right over top of that whole area because we're going to make it shadowed. So we want the um, color to be darker. And let that dry. And we might have to put another coat on, we'll see. So while that's drying, I'm going to put on, hmm, let's do the lamb. We can put the, I'm going to do it in a kind of a, a gray. Because what I'm going to do is, I know he's white, but underneath is kind of what you want to do and then we do the highlights on top which is more of the white color or buff so i'm going to just use a buff color and then i'm going to mix a little of this black this soft black so it's kind of the soft black's got a little bit of brown in it which is a nice color and then we're just going to paint over top of them. You know, on the edges you can just swipe it up so it gives it a little bit of a fuzzy edge on on his ears and his head, wherever um, you see the colors or his body stop. Just add a little bit. Don't worry if you go over your eyes or certain parts. You can always go back and put that in with your um, tracing. We want to get rid of that color of, of red. This is just, just a base coat. The inside of his ears are kind of a pinky color, so we'll do those in a different shade. So right here, we'll put a few little fuzzies up, coming up into the outside edge. Just around here. Now under his chin it's not as fuzzy because he's he's not got all his coat on yet. I know where his nose is because I put that black around where his nostrils were. So that helps me with um, placing the pattern back on if I have to. I think I have to mix more up.
you just make sure you have a fairly good coat. You don't want to see a whole lot of that red through it. And then his little neck peeking up through the barn door. Joan, it's a lamb. <laughs> All right, so let's put a little bit of pinky color in there. So let's just use some of this red. And I'm just going to add it to that gray that we did and just might have to add a little bit of white over that line just to cover it Might have to you know, add white and let this dry so I don't have to worry about covering that. We can go back over top of that. All right. So then we can take a, what's this, burnt umber. And a little bit of a wider brush, I think. And I'm going to put a little bit of that, um, I think it's buttermilk, buttercream color to it. Let's see if that's right. I think I need a little bit of yellow in there. I want it a little more on the... creamy or a wood side so that's a little bit dull so let's put some a bit of red in it let's see what we get And this is the side of the inside of the door. I'm going to have to put some cream on that too, I guess. So I can cover that up.
You can always go back over things. Because this is just the base coat, so don't worry if you go over some of the fur or that type of thing. This is just the base, so we can always touch up things. And this is the little floorboard that goes across the doorway. Just a base coat. We can add to this. <laughs> you don't get fluffier yet. Not. Okay, so this here is ground actually. So I'm just going to put some brown on here. Just plain umber and just cover this whole area right in here. You can add darker, lighter, whatever you want. Let's see, I'm going to have to get these done again too, so I'm going to just cover these stripes here so they're not noticeable and then we'll have to go back and paint over it again. Kind of just go on um, X pattern when you're doing this part because the ground's kind of all different shades of brown and black and cream and you could take a sponge too if you wanted to use a sponge and then let that dry. So this part here, the little um, handle of the door, we'll probably use the same color, that brownish shade, and we'll just paint that there. And there's kind of little blocks so it doesn't sit flush with the door and then add a little more cream color to to your brush and then just do the top edge a little lighter like that and then you could do a little bit on there and there. Um, then we can do put a little bit of that brown color Let's see. How do I want to do this? Is that dry enough? I think so. We're going to make a little edge on the, the side of this door. So I'm just taking my angled brush and on this um, 
tip of the brush, I'm just going to add black to it. See, I've just dipped it in. And then I just have a little bit of water on my brush. Not a whole lot. And then just inside of that, just go down a little bit. Mm, let's see I think we can use another just a little bit more um, of a shade on there so I think I'm going to actually get my big brush wet it and I'm going to dip it in that black a bit and I'm just going to on the side here get it into my brush and then So it's kind of like a the edge of that pole. So you want to make sure it's noticeable that that's um, a shadow. We can put in, use that black again, and just on the inside of this door opening here, I'm just going to put a little bit. And right here, just going to make it a little darker. And then just swiping up that dark shade. So if my brush is fairly um, dry, just go across the bottom. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a textured look. So the bottom of the um, wood would be a little darker from um, wet and use. And even on this here, we can add some of that watered down black. It's a soft black. Just go up this wood here. Make it darker. You can do the same with the bottom here too.
Now, let's see what we can do with this guy. We can finish the little bits of detail later. Let's get working on the little lamb. So now I want to use a brush that's going to be a little stiffer because you want to kind of do this in a dry brushing um, way. So I have a scruffy brush here. This is a bristle brush. It's fairly worn. It's kind of splayed and that's perfect for doing this type. Hey Gail. Yeah, it doesn't take much to uh, add dimension and detail. Okay, I'm going to get another paint tray here. Let's see if I got one. I got one. Oh, this one's not too bad. These are just dry paint on these paint trays. So we're going to add a little bit of white. Where's my white? I'll have to get some titanium white. White, white. One moment. Oh, I have a big bottle. Where is it? Yeah, I ran out of craft paint and white, so I have some titanium here. And you, I have a bit of that black. So I'm just, I, this brush hasn't been wet, so I'm just going to dab this brush in and just mash it into my brush. So it's just on the end. And then, um, I think what I'll do too is I'll, I'll um, after the stream, I will put a reference photo for you of this so you can um, see how I, where I put it. So the top of his head would have the most light. So you just have to flick it. Kind of have to um, take a look at reference photos if you want to see um, which way the the fur is running on certain animals. Lambs aren't too difficult, really. Um, their their fur is just all over the place. They'll be more concentrated white though at the very top. So you won't see a whole lot of the gray, but you do want to leave some of that gray. You don't want to take all of it away. We can also go back with some gray, um, which I normally do. Because it looks good the more um, layers you put on with fur. So 
so you can hear the scratching of the bristles so you can hear how um, stiff it is and I'm not pressing very hard now down his nose would be really bright so you, it's more concentrated a white here And it, his little nose um, widens by the eye. So the, the white would be across. He, and his nose isn't really, it doesn't really stick out a whole lot. It does a little bit, but not a lot. And his nose has white and pink on the end with a little bit of gray. As you get underneath the eye, then the fur kind of goes down after. It doesn't go up. And it kind of just gets dotty. It's not very long. The, the fur around his the top part of his nose and around the muzzle part. It's not really long. We'll have to add some pink to his nose there. And we'll add some gray parts to to his uh, fur too. So I'm just dotting. So I'm getting a little less white as I go in towards the body because that's the shadowed areas. Turn your brush too as you do it and that way you don't get a um, pattern from your brush. His little ears are, they have fairly thick ears. Take it into that pink area. Oh, I gotta do that pink part there. Nearly forgot. So we want to do that pinky area again. So that was that color. 
little bit of brown. It's kind of a dusty rose color, I guess you could say. brush off. You don't want a lot of water in your brushes when you're doing this dry method. So make sure you're you got as much water out as you can. Okay, so we'll just So here I'm just stroking in some more white areas that's more concentrated, it's more um, bright area where the fur probably isn't as long. Down his nose would be that. Not quite as long. And right around his little mouth here. Be short hair. a little bit under his little mouth here. Little cheek, a little darker or lighter. And right under his eye here. So I'm following I guess the, the structure of his face by the highlights and the lowlights. So he has kind of a lid there, a little protrusion of where his eye would be. So it's a little brighter. Up here, it's a little bit brighter. Across his nose a little bit right here. And I'm just going to put a little bit more of this bright white here. And along his ear, top of his ear.
Okay, so now you can almost hear him bah. <laughs> Hey, Kim. So now I think he needs a little bit of um, some shadowing in the inner part of his ear here. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that black brown to that pinky color. So it kind of makes it almost on a mauve side. I'm just going to Add a little bit of water to my brush, not much, and just brush it in a little bit. Blend it in, take that water off. We add a little bit of Just in this in here, where it gets a little bit darker. Okay, and now we have to put a little bit of pink on his nose too. So let's get some of that red. Let's see, make sure your brush is good and clean. A little bit of white on there. Very light color pink. Okay, and I'm just gonna dot in the bottom part. I can go back if I have to. Um, fix anything. And I'm just going to let that dry. And then I want a little bit of that black again with that. And I'm going to make um, his little smiley mouth. But it needs to be fairly dark. I almost want almost a burgundy color. See if I can put some red with this. How dark can I get it? And I just want to um, ever so slight. He also has a little darker there. And he actually has a little line that goes up his nose and down his lip. I'm going to take a little bit of that dark color again and just make this a little bit longer here, his nostril. And I 
take a little bit of that white again. Where did I put my brush? And just tap. Over that white area. And a little bit of the gray. Um, we'll have to make a little bit of gray. So I had a little bit of the black, and I had that buttermilk or whatever, buttercream color. And just dot some of that gray over top of the nose a bit. You can kind of go back and forth if you want. And then he has a little, I might have to get a smaller brush here. Let's see. What do I have? Small, small little brush that I can use. There's a deer foot, I think. Yeah, this will do. <clears throat> this gray color, we want to put in that. Oh, that's not enough. Gray. Now we want to emphasize where the shadow around his little muzzle starts. He has a little bit on the, on the top of his lip. goes up and a little bit on the side here and right here where his eyebrow is here he has quite a bit of definition whereas a little bit of fur is around the edge here of, her, of his neck I guess it would be so it's a little bit darker shade I think I need a little bit more black in there Here's his chin
just this is the shadowed part of his body. And I can go back and put a few um, lighter marks in. Here, his eye is. Just so, so light. Be a little bit on the cheek part here. And a little bit of shadowing in this fur here. Just there. Blend this in a little bit. Like that other brush better. And then I just uh, go in here a little bit. So it's back and forth. You kind of add a little, you darken a little, then you add a little. <laughs> but in the shadows, you don't add a lot of, of the white back, just a bit. And he needs a little more fuzz on his ear. Alright, then let's do his eyes. So I'm going to just take a, this is a number two round. And we're just going to do the pupils first. Or actually, no, I'm going to do the... I'm going to do them brown. They're usually a goldy brown color. It doesn't have to be a whole lot of difference. Um, you can't really see the, the eye a lot in this photo that I have, but 
This is when you can take your artistic license and do whatever you want. Then you can take a little bit of yellow in there. Just glaze it over top if you wanted to. Just to add a little bit of uh, lightness around the Doesn't have to be a lot. And now I'll take the black and do the center of the eye. Yeah, here, that's rogue. And then just a smidgen of black under, just under here a little bit. You could take a pencil crayon if you wanted to. And then just comes out with some shadow. Oh, I have a hair that is not supposed to be on the tip here. Now this little guy also has some eyelashes. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna fix this nose a little bit first though. I want a little bit more shadow in here. And right in here needs to be. Actually, there's a little bit of a glow in his ear from the sun. So it's kind of a brighter pink. It's right in here. Just gonna try and uh, have it go down a bit. It might need a little bit of yellow actually in there. Too much. It's almost this glow that you get, you know, when you put a 
Um, flashlight over top of your hand and turn it on. You can see that's what it's got in his ear. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this or not. Adding a little bit of that buff color. It's not bad. Just play with it until you get it right. Okay, then I can take some more white and just fix those wisps inside his ear. Over top of that. And fix any little areas you want. And just a small highlight, not much of one. Hmm. Just a tiny, tiny one right there. We'll put one right there. Now let's do something about the hay. I'm just going to take my liner brush. Or, well, I could use this one too. And we're going to make some. This is thinking. How do I want to do this? Some brown, some yellow. Kind of want it streaky. And just start. Going in straight lines, you can um, go back and forth, crisscross, lighter, smaller, small ones. Change the color a little bit by adding uh, more white to it. A little more congested in the or built up in the back here. Goes down into the
a little lighter. Let's change the colors. have a few out here. Um, I'm going to take my stipple brush again and I'm going to take that brown color, just brown for now. That's the umber color. And I'm just going to you could take a sponge and do this too. And a little bit of black to that. Um, close to the uh, barn edge, I would do it a little more on the black side, just to add that it's shaded. We can always come back and put more of this on top as soon as this is dry. So don't worry about um, You could also take a toothbrush and splatter this area too. That would look kind of cool. Um, let's see what I got here. Something stiff. I don't think I have a toothbrush down here. This will work. Um, to wet it, just take a towel or something and put it across so it doesn't go on the piece of paper. Take some of that black on your brush, just if you got enough. Oh, it needs to be fairly watered down. Just, I don't think this brush is going to do it. Yeah, a little bit. You could even put it on the wood too if you want it to. That, you could take some of the white, a little bit of brown in it, do the same. It has to be fairly soupy to do that. Let's 
so we'll see. So you can dry that and then we'll put some more of the hay on. Take your brush again, that um, liner brush or a very small round, and now we can add some more of that. Just here and there, different sizes. And don't forget to change the tone too, because not all of them are do some darker ones back here. Now, you can do a few little plants. So just uh, get a round brush is probably the easiest. Uh, or a filbert will do too. This is a filbert. And just get some green. Um, I've got, let's see, this is foliage green. And you can always change the color of your green by adding a little bit of red or black to it. So see if we, when you, when you add a little bit of red to your green, it goes more olivey color. And if you want to lighten it, then you just add a little bit of that white. So we might have some Oh, fennel clover or something maybe here and there could have some weeds take my other brush again and make some grass too much water. brown in there. You could also use your your scruffy brush to do that too if you wanted to. If you want something a little finer, so you just take your scruffy brush again. Kind of makes grass.
All right, then let's see, what else can we do here? Um, the side of the door here, could add a little bit more detail to that. So it's a barn door, so it would be a little bit worn, and so we could take some of this brown black here, and you could go down parts of it, and then just make it more gnarly looking by adding cracks in the wood, or you could do this with a pen too if you wanted to. Um, this handle here could have some darker areas underneath here. Give it a little more. Detail. Maybe it's a little bit worn and tattered. See, is there anything else I can do here? Um, you could glaze some if you feel there's too much white. Just take a, a brush and put a lot of water on it, and you can take some of that brown, soft black or brown, and add shadows to your fur if you wanted to. Like, there is a little bit of a shadow in here. Make sure you have enough water on your brush. Um, maybe it's a bit of a shadow in here. Oh well, yeah, we were going to put eyelashes on him. His eyelashes are white and I think I have a white pen I can use here. Let's see if this works. Might not, I don't know. We'll see. And his eyelashes kind of go across I don't know if you'll notice it, but Ooh, that's too much. It's a little bit not as stab it a little bit. That's it for today. So there's your little
I'm not sure if it's spring. <laughs> oh, thanks, Joan. So you can use your paper. I think it turned out pretty good for using the paper. And um, you could piece the paper if you wanted to. There's all, all different ways of going about doing this. Can you hold it up close? You don't have to put the eyelashes on if you don't want to. Um, it, you could actually use a colored pencil if you wanted to do that too. Um, yeah, but he's fun and give it a try. Download the uh, traceable. It's on the community page for everybody that's public and members. Um, members, I will be doing it, but not tomorrow. It'll be on Saturday instead. And um, that's for the blooming artist and budding artist. Yours will be up on Monday. So make sure to um, check your the membership um, community page for all the traceables and the um, supply list. So I hope that's okay. And if you're interested in more um, detailed step-by-steps, uh, be sure to check out the join button below the screen there or it's in my description below the video. There's a link that you can click on and it'll tell you all the information about the membership. So till then I will see you somewhere on the internet I'm sure and thanks everybody for being here and keeping me company. Hope you give this a try. And if you have any questions, you can always get a hold of me on Instagram or Twitter. I'm on Kathy Arbor on both. So have a great day, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you on Tuesday. Thanks so much.